Welcome back. Well, it's time for another one of our brand new series, essentially, and this is bar chart. So we're going through the entire Microsoft tutorial suite. And what I'm trying to do, basically, is cover every single tutorial from an instructor's point of view, where essentially, you know, I had a bunch of descriptions. This is one of those great tutorials because it adds on to what you're doing. And, you know, yesterday I was on some of the forums and I was answering questions and whatever else that people had. And they were questions that I had covered in here and I felt pretty good. I mean, I felt good because I, I, I was covering them here, but I also felt good because I had dealt with them in real life. So these are really handy. Um, it's the type of series where I really do think it's best that you go through the entire series, definitely. But it's also one of the most rewarding sorts of things. And I wish that I would have had a series available like this when I first started um, learning about reporting because it would have made a big difference. So hope you guys enjoy. Excellent series coming up. You'll love the bar charts, and we get to really dive into them. You get to see all these little tricks and whatever else. So hope you like it, and hope it's going well, and just let me know. Let me know definitely if you like it or not. You can always email me or YouTube me or something. Take care. See you soon. Wow, what a very nice tutorial that we have today. All right, so we're going to do bar charts today. And once again, this is one of those modules where it's not just about how to make these charts like this that appears bars you know that 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 actually span horizontally um it's about other things too like how to filter them how to be able to display only certain values how to go about how to go about sorting how to do things like change the position of a label these things apply to more charts than just bar charts so you learn all these little tricks in this particular module and all these little things that will really enhance your report your report making capabilities and that's going to be extremely significant because in the next module after this we get into spark lines which are then going to enhance this even more so what we're going to do is we're going to do this particular tutorial adding a bar chart using report builder and get ready because this will be a lot of fun all right so first i'm going to go in over here and for those of you who are just now joining in i've been using a sharepoint 2013 environment that i built um, the night before i started these demos uh, got it up pretty quickly and fixed a bunch of errors and then got it working essentially and that's what I've been doing but like I said I'm gonna probably go back and perfect it a little bit more especially when I get started with the um, when I get started with some of the other BI BI tools I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to it it's just it's been a very busy time lately so I'm gonna click on report build a report in SharePoint 2013 and also for those of you that are brand new you don't have to use SharePoint 2013 for this you don't even have to use SharePoint you just need report builder but, you know, I chose to use SharePoint 2013 just to give it a new sort of, you know, feel for displaying this functionality with SQL Server 2012 and with, and with SharePoint 2013 because it was new while we wait for Report Builder to come up. And Report Builder should have came up. Let me just click on it again. I could have just manually brought it up, but I prefer to do it this way. And let me see over here thought it was coming I was clicking on my particular part it doesn't usually take this long let me refresh this site there we go and then let me click back on files and launch it from here there we go there it is so click open just needed a refresh on the browser as I said before my SharePoint is not completely configured so please forgive that uh, remember, you don't have to use SharePoint for this, too, so just keep that in mind. And also, too, these tutorials uh, will, will also work with SQL Server 2008 R2, the majority of them, so keep that in mind also. Okay, now, coming back over here. We've got, we've got our report coming back, and we're going to go back to our chart wizard that we've used now for the last few tutorials. So that helps us create reports. And the first thing we're going to do is create a data set, right? So I'm going to click Next so we can get the set of data that our reports will actually use. And then first I'm going to make a data source, which I've said for the umpteenth billionth time, right? Um, not really, not really, um, the data source over here, you know, you can think of it, and you can think of it, you know, like a, like a bridging between two APIs to allow communication of data, but a real easy way in, in layman's terms is just the stored text that has the username and password, or at least the type of security, like Windows integrated security, the name of the database, and the name of the database server to find the database. So there's AdventureWorks 2012 DS, AdventureWorks 2012 data source. Now I come down to Microsoft SQL Server, then I'm gonna click build. Then I'm gonna just put localhost and I could choose any database that I want over here because of the nature of the query. Now in real life, I said that's not true. In real life, you will be choosing a database that actually contains the data that you need. 
Here, I'm just running things against what's known as the database engine, which basically executes my queries for me. I'm going to hit credentials over here. And then for credentials, normally you wouldn't have to put this in, but I said before that I'm not done um, configuring my SharePoint 2013 image. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, a, so I'm going to go ahead and put over here, I'm going to put in Brandon demos. And then a dummy username that I gave it just for, just for the purposes of doing some of these demos over here, demonstrations. And I'll just use them as Windows credentials so I don't actually um, use Kerberos over here. And I promise I'm going to throw Kerberos on my, C on my server 2012 as soon as I get a chance to. Okay, there we go. And I'll click Next. Now I'm going to use the query over here. So first we need to get a data set. All right. And I said a data set is basically, while you're in design time, the columns that you're working with, also known as fields, right? Columns are known as fields. Um, and then I said that when you run it, it's actually the set of data that your report's using. So during design time, it's when you're dragging and dropping columns. During run time, it's when you're actually bringing in the data from those columns. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here for the query. And I also said something else too. I purposely made it to where you could repeat all these processes. Being an instructor, I've particularly learned that there's nothing that substitutes for hands-on experience. Nothing. Um, granted, though, lectures can have a big effect on, on picking up the learning curve, which is what I'm doing over here. But for this particular part, I used all these tutorials on purpose so that you could repeat what I did at your own leisure. And I, and I emphasize that until you've repeated what I've done, and I emphasize that now, um, by actually going through these after you've watched the lectures, um, you still just usually won't quite know it. You've got to go ahead and actually and actually get that hands-on experience, and this is great for that. So I'm going to copy this tutorial, all free, all available from Microsoft, no cost. Then I'm going to come back and come back to my data set, and I'm going to hit Control-V just to paste it. And then I'm going to test it out by clicking Run to make sure that it actually gives data. Yes, it does. So I'm going to click Next. And now I'm going to choose a new type of chart, which is the bar chart. So very interesting over here. Here's my bar chart right over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Next. Then here we go. Starting back yet again with our categories, values, um, with our categories, values, and series. Now, we're going to be using categories and values for this particular lecture. And what our goal is, is our goal is going to be, a, is going to, be to display some categories, multiple different, multiple different values, okay? Some sort of some sort of multiple different um, type of value, um, some sort of column anyway, with multiple different distinct values, and we want to then turn around and display the cells for each of those, the cells for 2008 and 2009. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first by coming in here, and I'm going to bring last name into categories. Right off the bat, notice that I'm not touching first name. I'm using last name. Why? Because I'm gonna, I want to match cells to every single distinct last name value. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in cells 2009 first and then cells year 2008 second. Now let me explain what this is going to do. This is going, let's click back over here and let me come up. This is going to give me this bar chart like this. Now notice over here that this is last name over here. You can see Chris Chris Ashton, David Bradley, Brian Burke. Right now, all we've said was just last name. We'll see how to add the first name in there later on. So for every single last name, we can see this is going to have the sales for 2008 or, or, um, or for 2008 and 2009. So there you guys can actually see 2008 and then you can see 2009 right above it. So you guys can see how this is valuable. And you see where this works, where something like this works very, very well is that what you can do is you can oftentimes use these categories to be able to see multiple different value type fields. So how they compare. So for example, give me sales for year 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012 for territory United States. Category would be, you know, category would contain the value United States inside of it. And then the values would contain all those different numerical fields that get summarized. So very nice to be able to understand that. Okay, um, now going a little bit further. I'm going to turn around now and get back into my report. And then I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to stay with Ocean and I'm going to click Finish. Now, once I'm over there, I'm going to do something for our demo purposes. And I'm learning from doing these videos as I continue to do them now. Um, I'm going to make this very big. These videos, by the way, are best viewed on um, 1920 by 1080 resolution. 
And even though I'm making this real big, half the reason is so that that way during your video while you're watching it, it'll display appropriately. That's the main reason actually. So right there, bam, just like that. So I expand it to that maximum size. Now we've talked about sizing already in previous vi videos, so keep that in mind. But over here, this is just so that we can all see the screen quite clearly as I begin to go through this exercise. So something that I've learned anyway from having watched the videos. Okay, now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this vertical axis. We talked about this earlier inside of another tutorial, right? So you left click over here and where you see all these labels right there, that's the vertical axis, right? Um, right next to the bars. And what I'm going to do is I want to change something up. So let me show you what I want to change first. I'm going to click run. And in run, notice that notice that we have one, two, three, four, and then a label appears on the fifth axis. One, two, three, four, label appears on the fifth axis. So we're only getting an interval, we're only getting what's known as an interval of five. That means that, means that the label appears every five values. We don't want that. We want the label to appear on every single value, right? So how could we change that? We change the interval to one. Let me show you how to do that. So click on design. Now come over to the axis properties and tell it, I want to change when you're going to actually display this particular um, label. So I'm going to right click over here and then I'm going to click on vertical axis properties. Okay. Now once I'm on vertical axis properties, what I'm going to do is come down to um, uh, what I'm going to do over there is come down to axis range and interval and then inside of the interval box I'm going to go ahead and just type one which means now display this on every single every single um, interval then I'm going to click OK and there's one more thing I want to do here's an axis title over here for the vertical maybe I decide that I don't actually need that so we saw how to eliminate that a little bit earlier on inside of another tutorial what I do is I right click and then where it's got show axis title, uncheck it. There. Now I'm going to come back and click run. Excellent. So we just saw two very nice things. One new thing that we hadn't covered in previous tutorials. We saw how we could actually take an axis, right? And we saw how we could change the interval on the vertical axis. So you guys could see that to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And we had changed intervals before, but at least in this case, we actually see it apply to a um, bar chart. And then we also saw how we could take the axis um, title and just right click and, and actually uncheck the show axis title to give us more space. So now we have more space vertically over here. And this looks a lot cleaner. This looks a lot cleaner. Plus all these values are labeled. So we can see what these bars actually mean. For Zing, we can actually see, you know, for example, what the cells went up to. All right, but this still needs a lot more work. It's not there yet. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and change change the display on the vertical axes to show last name and first name. See, remember we had that remember we had that first name and we had the last name field, but we only used the last